Hello, 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 everybody. This is David Delaney with Ten Bound. Thanks so much for joining us on the largest online sales development summit with Inside Sales and Sales Hacker. I am just absolutely honored to be able to share some hard won information with you today that I hope that you can take and use immediately as a sales development rep, as an AE, as a sales leader, or leading a company. This is good stuff. Thanks so much to Inside Sales and Sales Hacker for having me on today. I will be talking about personas and pain points, which I believe are your keys to successful messaging in what's going to be 2018 and beyond. As I mentioned, my name is David Delaney. I'm with a company called Tenbound here in San Francisco, and we work with sales development teams to improve their performance, either through training programs, consulting programs, or events, including the Sales Development Conference in September. We're going to do one again in September in San Francisco at the Ritz-Carlton San Francisco. So stay tuned for that over at tenbound.com. So let's dive in. Why are we talking about personas today, and why do I think that they're your key to successful messaging? I'm very excited to talk with folks on the rep track today, on the representative track, and I hope that you know all the sales development reps or account development reps, whatever you call yourself, can gain value off of this um, presentation because I know how hard the job is. I've done it myself. Um, I c continue to do it as a business owner, and um, I know some of the roadblocks both as someone doing the job and also as someone receiving the messages. And so why do we start with learning about personas uh, versus learning all about your product and how it works and all the different um, angles of uh, you know, your product and your, your catalog? What is a persona and, and where does this even come from? Uh, it comes from actually... Uh, user experience and how people use websites. Uh, they take who the person is that's using it, what their usual age range is, what their usual job is, and uh, you know the usual characteristics, and they kind of boil it down into a general way, a shorthand of saying who's actually using the product. And I really strongly believe that before you start to learn about all the great things that your product does, where you want to spend your time really focusing is who actually uses your product and what are the characteristics of that individual. Um, with really focusing on the people that actually are the end users, you're going to put yourself way ahead of the pack in your average SDR uh, you know, type of skill development and put yourself at the front of the line when it comes time to get promoted to an account executives. You know, uh, the real competitor that we have out there is not necessarily the competitor that you're going up against. It's actually looks more like this. Um, it's competing for attention of the people that we're talking to. And so, as you can see, this is just a recent uh, screenshot that I took. Um, you know, I've got 17 different tabs open of different projects that I'm working on. I've got six or seven different Chrome plugins of different things that I've, I've got. I've got 2,159 emails <laughs> that I need to figure out what to do with. Um, you know, also over on the left there, I've got people tweeting me. I've got LinkedIn updates. I've got Facebook. Um, all the family obligations, all the you know outside obligations, and you know I'm I'm uh, just one person trying to deal with all this stuff. So you can imagine when I get the average message from a sales development rep uh, who doesn't know anything about me, uh, doesn't know anything about the things that I'm worried about. It just adds to this overall um, disjointed, uh, you know, fragmented lack of focus and attention and it really it's so easy for me to simply delete this um, 
you know, so, so we have to be able to compete with this very, very competitive market that we have out there, which is just getting people's attention, just getting them to pause long enough to read through our message and see if it's something that can actually help them. Um, you know, this is what you're competing against. And this is why it's so important for you to learn, you know, who is this person that I'm trying to impact? Who is this person whose email box I'm going to be adding to with my message? Whose voicemail box I'm going to be adding to with my message? And, you know, what, what makes them tick? And that's why, as I said, when you think about personas, um, make that part of your vocabulary. You know, who is this person and what are the various characteristics that they have? So, number one, as you think about, you know, your product and what you're selling, um, who are, let's say, the top three or four people that are involved in the deals, okay? Um, where are they located, um, both within the country um, and also within their organization? Um, what are some key performance indicators that uh, are really critical to their success? And I'll give you some examples, but um, a couple other quick questions. You know, what are their top three priorities for the year? Um, what are they trying to accomplish? When do they know if they're doing well? And when do they know if they're going to be in trouble? Um, you know, what are those things that you can, you know, really get to know about this group of people in order to kind of classify them into what we call a persona? So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you were selling software that could potentially impact uh, the life of a VP of sales, Okay. So you know, just from talking to people, you probably find this out on the first day, that a great target for your uh, prospecting is the VP of sales. Okay, so that's a, that's a great indicator. Okay, you've got probably your first persona right there. Okay, we know from talking to people that we go after the VP of sales. Okay, so now we need to figure out, you know, who are these people? How can I characterize them into a persona? And... How can I, you know, put that down on paper and get to know more about their world? Um, as a sales development rep, uh, you might have been, uh, you know, doing another job before this. This could be your first sales job, or you were in a different industry, or this could be, um, you know, the first time that you've actually had to, you know, uh, learn about the business world, for example. So if you think about it, you know that your main persona is the VP of sales and what does it take to actually become a VP of sales? Okay, you need to uh, work your way up the sales organization. You need several years of experience most likely in closing uh, small deals and medium-sized deals and complex deals. Um, you need experience running a sales organization um, from a small team up to directing um, and managing managers, and then finally managing a team of directors as a VP. Um, you need executive skills. You need to be able to talk to the CEO about uh, your pipeline forecast and about the deals that you have in play and where you think you're going to end the quarter. Okay, There's a number of different pieces of uh, experience that you have to take to be become a VP of sales. Okay, so now taking it back from the example, if this persona is your target, then you need to kind of break down, okay, what does what that experience level look like? What did they have to do to become a VP of sales? And then finally, sort of almost get into, get in their head a little bit. Okay, now that they are a VP of sales, um, when I say key performance indicator, what are the you know, three or four things that most VP of sales really have to worry about every night you know, before they go to bed? They're up um, you know, tossing and turning, trying to figure out you know, uh, how are they going to accomplish these three or four things so that they can be successful in their job. You, you must be able to identify those. 
And, and that, that's just an example. You may not be calling on the VP of sales. You may be calling on the head of um, a technology. You may be calling on um, car dealerships. <laughs> you may be calling on um, you know, people who run salons and things like that. But you have to at least have that persona nailed down and be able to speak to it. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the messaging really resonate. Because, you know, really, you've got to get inside their head and also, to some extent, inside their heart. And, you know, we're, we're not necessarily uh, just people who are a name and a phone number in a database. Um, you know, even someone who's, uh, you know, a very high-level executive is still a human being. Um, and they're beyond uh, just a simple name and phone number and... Uh, what you may read about in your uh, CRM. Um, they're an actual person um, and you have to be able to become an expert in, you know, what do they really care about? Um, how do they like to communicate? Um, are they more telephone people? Do they like email? Do they prefer text? Do they hang out in social networks? Um, are there particular groups? Are there places that they go? Are there events? You know, all these different things make up the characteristics of the persona and, and help you to understand not only what they're thinking about, but also, you know, what really drives them potentially emotionally. Um, what, what do they like? What do they dislike? Um, you know, generally some facts that you can get about them so that you can take this information and create that persona uh, uh, profile that you can then create your messaging off of. And finally, as you kind of get that uh, persona profile put together, now you have to kind of shift it to yourself and think about, you know, what do you sp really care about? Um, you're going to want to become an expert in the pain points and the, the things that are really, um, you know, concerning your key persona, you're going to want to become an expert in that. Um, I would argue that it's even more important to become an expert in those pain points and those drivers versus necessarily what your product even does. I mean, that's very important, but, uh, and you need to tie that back, and we'll talk about that, but really, thing number one is, you know, who is this, I'll bring it back to the example, who is this VP of sales? What are those aspects of the persona profile that you've put together um, that drive them emotionally and drive their decision-making process? And do I really care about those things? Um, am I just trying to sell them something or am I just trying to land an appointment with them, but I don't really care? I mean, you got to kind of look yourself in the mirror and figure that out for yourself um, because that's going to come through. If, you, if somebody's just trying to sell me something or they're just pushing their product or they're just trying to push me in to take a meeting, I'm going to feel that. And, you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, people become repulsed by that kind of approach. And so you really got to kind of look yourself in the mirror and figure out, do I truly care about the persona that I'm, I'm, you know, attempting to engage with? Do I care about what they are thinking about? Um, am I really trying to help them? Or am I just trying to push them into a meeting? Um, because, you know, they're going to they're gonna get that email. And again, I showed you my email box. It's not even as crazy as some people's. They're going to get that. They're going to feel that immediately. They're going to meet you at a conference. They're going to feel that immediately. Um, I mean, people really want to feel that you're genuinely trying to help them um, before they kind of open up that trust to you and before they want to continue to have a business relationship. So you got to really ask yourself, you know, whatever you're selling right now, um, you know, do, do you genuinely care about the people that you're engaging with? Um, because if you don't, then you need to figure out how to maybe spend more time with them get to know them better or, you know, um, you know, go out and, and meet some of them and, and, and build that, build that up. Or, or you could potentially be in the wrong business right now. 
Um, and you gotta, then you gotta take a step back and go, do I really want to do this for the next five years or however long? Um, because if, if you're not, if you, if you don't genuinely feel it in your deep down in your bones, then it's going to be hard to continue on when you're getting a lot of rejection, which, which comes naturally as a sales development rep. Now, how do you, how do you do this? How do you go out and, and find these people um, and and start to learn about them? Again, if you're uh, starting out as a sales development rep and you haven't been a VP of sales for 20 years, how do you find this information? Well, thing number one is, um, you know, of course, read all the case studies that you have on hand. Um, read your, your sales playbook if you have one. I'm sure that there's a lot of good information in there. Um, learn about um, I- any information that your company provides about the personas, you know, learn that thing inside and out. And then, you know, go it within your company and find that key person that you need to be talking to. So I'm sure that if you're calling on VPs of sales, go and find the VP of sales and, and take them out to lunch, take them out to coffee, go grab a beer, um, get to know them and and ask them, you know, what are your KPIs? Um, you know, how do you interact with the executives? What what um, things are you concerned about? You know, right before you go to bed. You know, what what events do you go to? What drives you? And and it, use that. You know, if nobody made a persona sheet for you, um, th- use that information to make one yourself, and then go give it to your manager and and tell them, you know, hey, I made this so that I could figure out who I was calling on. Um, the, the next thing is, um, you know, take, go find your number one sales rep at your company and take them out to lunch and go, look, you know, I, I want to learn everything that I can, I can understand about the people that are buying this product, um, the people that are buying our service. What keeps them up at night? Um, what, what are they concerned about? What, what, how are they measured? You know, take, take notes and, and, cross-check it against the interview that you had with your own VP of sales and and use it to augment that persona profile that you created um, in order to really make sure that you've got uh, all the information that you can about uh, this this um, person that you're going to be calling on and you know create a little cheat sheet take it a step further um, make a make a quick uh, brown bag lunch for your team and present it and go, okay, you know, I, I, I'm new to this. Um, I needed to find out who these people were and what, 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 you know, they were driven by. So I went out and I talked to our number one sales rep and our own VP of sales. And I put that together. Um, here's what I learned. Boom, boom, boom. And then they can add more of stuff that they know about it. You know, a couple of other quick things. Um, if, if you can, um, go out and talk to the people that have actually bought your product, purchased your product. How are they using it? Um, you know, what are they doing? What problems is it solving? Why is it important? How is it helping? You know, gather all that information from those actual people because they're the ones that are, you know, the, they were a prospect at some point uh, in the past. They either became an inbound lead or someone cold called them to bring them into the fold and now they're using it and they're getting a lot of value out of it. So they're a perfect person to talk to. Um, you know, go, go out on a sales call and, and talk with them. Um, learn more about it. Um, you know, even go up to, uh, one, another idea, go up to your CEO or the founder of the company. <laughs> you know, I mean, depending on the, how big your company is, if it's a startup, take the founder out to lunch. Hey, same thing. Why did you start the company? What problem are you trying to solve? Who are the people that are involved in this? Tell me more about them. Um, you know, give me all the information about, you know, why our, com- our company's product is going to make their life so much better, you know, so that, that, that I can really understand this. So you're gathering all this information as part of your, your persona, um, you know, profile that you're putting together because we're going to be using it in the messaging. So again, do you really care about these people? Look yourself in the mirror. Make sure that it's something that you're passionate about and that you want to talk about for the next few years and then go for it 100%. Okay, now, okay, we've got the persona profile put together. We've got a pretty good idea about who we're talking about. Now we need to focus on, you know, translating that from, okay, here's who we're talking to. Here's my potential buyer. 
we got to translate that into an action plan. And, um, you know, this is something that your average sales development rep can do. It just takes a little bit of work at the, at the upfront, but it's also going to be, you know, your, your AE and your business owner that can put it together. So you just need two items, very, very simple to, um, to think about harder to implement, but you got to do that extra work at the upfront. You need two items. You need a list and you need a framework. Okay. So let's talk about the list. Okay. List. Um, you only have a certain amount of, of time. You only have a certain amount of resources. So you really want to narrow down your list to those key accounts that would make or break your business. Um, and, and these are ones that, uh, you know, if, especially if you're thinking about outbound, these are the ones that I want to put my uh, time and resources toward that because they're going to make such a huge impact. Okay. We got that list, get that list worked out. Um, whatever you have to do, get it from your, your account executive, get it from your CEO, get it from, um, your own work of figuring out what your A accounts are. It's going to be different for every company, but you first got to have that list put together. Okay. Number two, the key personas. Okay. You've got, we start with one, that you're going to know inside and out. You've done your interviews, okay? You've got your persona sheet worked out and you know, you feel like you're kind of starting to get inside the head of the people. You know who they are. You know, um, you know what their KPIs are. You know what they're driven by. You know what events that they like to go to. You know what groups that they hang out in. Um, you, you've got a pretty good handle on uh, the, the, the first steps of, of a persona sheet. Okay, so you got that together. Now, we want their top three pain points of that. Like, take all that information and boil it down into these are the top three things that are both, you know, at the top of their mind and also get them going potentially emotionally. And, um, you know, just as an example for the VP of sales, it could be, um, you know, ma making quota building a huge pipeline um, and potentially, you know, um, you know, uh, losing their losing their job if they don't make their number. I mean, that's that's a pretty big pain point. Right. Um, so you've got three major pain points lined up. And now next thing, of course, you got to have clean data. So, um, you know, if you you again, you know, as the SDR have to go out and get the data, um, you're going to have to do a lot of research. That's very labor intensive and time intensive. You know, do it on your own time, bring it in during work time so that you can plug it into this formula. Um, you could potentially have uh, interns, you know, gathering this information and teeing it up for you. The information could already uh, be available in your CRM, so you just got to go find it. But you got to have that data that you can put together on the list. And, you know, you may even consider putting together. A, a quick map of the various personas. Um, you can see some work that we did with a um, with an IT uh, company that was in the cybersecurity space, and you, as you can see, they had actually seven different personas um, that could potentially be involved in a deal. Okay, you're only one person. You you, you don't want to try to boil the ocean in one one step. Okay, so just pick one persona. Let's say over on the left, we're going to pick the network admin. Okay. We know that the network admin has three major pain points that they're dealing with. The bad user behavior, the poor integrations, and the system reliability. Those are three major pains that um, would drive the network admin to potentially, you know, look at that email and go, huh, okay. This, this guy actually gets what I'm going through right now. And, um, you know, I may actually take a call from this person versus just another, you know, cybersecurity vendor, you know, spamming them with, you know, un, un uh, personalized information. All right. So we got three things here. Okay. And now this framework is very, very simple. Like say um, I, I've got a list of my A accounts. Um, I ran a list. It's a hundred accounts. Okay. Within those hundred accounts, we know that there's, I'm just brainstorming, but we know that within those hundred accounts, there's at least two to three network admins. Okay. Let's go back to putting the list together. Okay. Within those hundred accounts, we know that there's two or three network admins. Okay. 
network admins. All right, I got my persona sheet over here. I'm looking, I'm looking at all this information. I know that I've got those three key pain points, okay? And I know that I've got some clean data in here to be able to go out and find them, okay? So now we just make a simple framework. Um, you, can, you can be as simple or as fancy as you want. Um, here I've got a picture of a, a spreadsheet. It's a simple spreadsheet. And what we need to do is um, just lay out for my network admin what are going to be my three messages that I send over a course of you know two weeks. Um, my three messages that point to those pain points and speak about a business driver and add how I can potentially help. Okay. You want to, um, I'm going to paraphrase a good friend of mine, Matt Admanson at Everstring, who gives the big three, okay? You want to give them some context. You want to give them some content, and then you want to challenge them, okay? In each of the message, you got those three Cs. So the content, the, excuse me, the context, the content, and the challenge, okay? And the context is going to be, why are you reaching out? So that's when we go back and we get one of our pain points and we plug it in as the first message. And so you can see we got up here, uh, bad user behavior is one of the key pain points for the network admin. Perfect. So we're going to build our first message on bad user behavior. And we put it in the, in the title line, uh, the subject line of the email. Um, we do maybe one sentence about how you know bad user behavior is uh, is a key challenge. Put in a little bit of content. You know, here's a here's a white paper uh, that you could read about you know how we dealt with that. And um, you know, hey, is this something that you're dealing with right now? Because if it is, I would love to talk with you. Um, here's here's how we're seeing other companies do it. Um, you know, and, and how they deal with it. You know, here's how I could potentially help you in, in, in looking at that from a wider perspective because I talk to cybersecurity companies every day. You know, you, you, you wouldn't put that in the first message, but you could spread that out over three different messages and, and really, you know, challenge them to uh, think a bit different and offer yourself as, as help. Um, now you've got those emails written out according to the pain point and how you could potentially help them. Now you're going to pick up the phone. Okay, it's the same process. We're talking about the context. Why are you calling? It's because we know that network admins have this uh, pain point that they're generally trying to solve. Um, we've we've worked with other companies to help them improve that. Um, I have some great information that I can share. Uh, of, across the industry that you can't get while you're, you know, in your, um, in your company, and that's why I'm calling. I would lo love to chat with you about that and see, you know, how we could help either now or in the future. Is that something that you'd be interested in, in um, challenging, uh, in, in chatting about? Is that a challenge that you're facing right now? Okay, and then of course, it's a it's a cold call, so the conversation could go in a lot of different directions. Um, but at least you're offering something of value. Um, and, and that's going to be the differentiation between you and hundreds of other people who, you know, doesn't know anything about the person they're calling. They don't know anything about the challenges. They don't really care, <laughs> to be honest. And it comes through on the phone. You're going to separate yourself by really understanding the persona and really understanding those pain points and putting them into your messaging throughout, you know, a, maybe it's a three touch email and three phone calls, maybe it's six touches, maybe it's nine, whatever you, whatever you end up doing, make sure that every message passes the persona and pain point test. If it doesn't really show that you understand the persona and you understand their pain points, don't send it. Um, even if it was written by somebody else, you know, hold it up, you know, redo it, make it, make it, you know, something relevant and valuable to your prospects and you will get better results. Um, and, it, it, the, you know, the last quick thing to think about is that with artificial intelligence taking over 
I mean, I just call it the robots taking over. Um, you know, we literally will be replaced by robots if we don't uh, use our, this human approach of really understanding the pain points and personas uh, that we're calling on. If we can't string this together and make it into something valuable, we will simply be replaced. Um, this, this brings the human into uh, the, the, the equation that, that, for right now at least, cannot be replaced. But literally, if you're just like pressing buttons on a, um, a program that's sending out 100 you know, repetitive emails, or if you're just like robocalling and reading from a script, um, look out because you're probably going to be replaced. So anyways, <laughs> that's my soapbox. Um, hey, if, if you would like to talk about this more, if you're interested in bringing this in and, and doing some consulting or training at your company, um, our website's there. It's tenbound.com. Give us a call or just hit me up in the chat box. Um, and I would love to chat with you more about how to operationalize this because I know it's a lot of information and I know it's a lot different than probably, um, you know, you've heard from other sources. But I really feel that in 2018, um, doing the work on the personas and pain points and working that into your messaging will get you more appointments, will get you more sales and ultimately make you a lot more money. And I think it's worth the time and effort to put in. So again, David Delaney with 10bound, 10bound.com. Hit me up and good luck with everything and good selling.